like other variations of the squat, the resistance comes to the low limits versus the upper limits. It's hard. It is a little bit awkward. So today, um, I'm pretty much going to try and do exercises that, uh, well, I didn't do yesterday, but try to distribute. So like yesterday, I didn't do a whole lot of back and a whole lot of triceps. So I'm starting off with some back and triceps. And I'm going to add a third part to it where I'm going to do a lunge to a curl or a curl to a lunge, whatever. So I'm uh, going to start off with alternate tricep uh, push downs with the cable. Um, I like doing alternate with the individual handles because then the weight's evenly distributed and I can make sure there are no imbalances and stuff like that. And also with triceps I like doing high reps and usually earlier on in the workout I prefer higher reps in general. So yeah, I've uh, been doing this for about four sets. Uh, the whole tri set which I'm going to show uh, but yeah let's go step by step through the exercises so try some push downs first So with that I started off uh, 10 alternate and 10 together. I'm going to move into some rows where I'm going to do 10 alternate and then 10 single doubles, single doubles. Um, but with that I'm trying to row into the lower back, trying to target more of the lower lats. So it looks like this. Each of these different tempos and rep schemes kind of give their own different kind of pump when it comes to uh, the exercise, which is why I like mixing up the different tempos, also having them higher reps, I'm able to focus a lot of blood into the area. So now moving into the curl to lunge. So I have a 35 pound dumbbell or kettlebell. It could be done with a dumbbell too. So I'm going to curl, lunge, curl, lunge, then switch hands. So what this allows is when 
one hand's curling, the other hand can rest. So, by the end of it, you should be able to do like decent number of reps with a heavier weight for curls as opposed to if you went 10 straight or even 8 straight or whatever which is what I'm going for So yeah, I'm adding a lunge to this. So I'm adding a lunge to this to make the movement a little bit more difficult and get the whole body working, which will get my heart rate going, or uh, increasing the overall intensity of the workout. But primarily, I want to target the biceps with that. And uh, the idea of switching hands instead of holding something in both hands allows one hand to rest while the other hand is curling. Uh, which allows me at least to get more total reps and stuff I were to get just 10 on one go for 10 or something on one hand but yeah I'm gonna do this for five to six sets and then on to something else so the next exercise is going to be a combination chest back to start off and then uh, a deadlift kind of in each position like a four position deadlift if that makes sense but I'll show you that in a second uh, with the combination push pull think of it uh, almost as a rotation exercise so you're generating rotational power so if you're rotating at the torso it it usually involves a push of one side and a curl in of the other side so just accentuating that with weights or doing that under resistance with weights and if you wanted to think of a practical application of such a movement, think that you're standing over someone on the floor and you're like punching them. That's a instance in which you'd be hovering over someone and then like rotating at the torso. In any case, the movement looks like this. Now moving into the four position deadlift. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So starting off with a suitcase hold. Coming up, taking a step out. I'm gonna do a deadlift in the middle. Come back down, switch hands, deadlift. Step to the side, deadlift. Then, then step back down, deadlift, step back in, deadlift, another middle deadlift with the opposing hand, come back out, 
deadlift. So that's one. I'm gonna do five of that. So yeah, uh, cool deadlift variation, I would say. Um, by combining all of these three, uh, again, triggers high heart rate because the full body is involved. And yeah, I'd say it's pretty functional. In any case, uh, cool triset or cool superset in my opinion. Give it a shot. Let me know what you think. So for the final circuit of today's movement, or for the final circuit of today's workout, I'm going to do these belted squats with the dip belt. So I'm going to have the dip belt around three plates. And then standing on this elevated surface and then going to do 10 to 12 squats with a wide stance. Unlike other variations of the squat, the resistance comes from below the hips versus above the hips, which makes for a unique contraction. It is a little bit awkward with multiple plates, but the same outcome can be achieved with a dumbbell or a kettlebell too, so that might be more optimal. There just aren't 135 pound dumbbells or kettlebells at this gym. Then, after I get these off, I'm going to move into some ballistic rows. Looks like this. And then finally, some towel grip farmer carries.
Oh. So yeah, I'm gonna do this for five sets and it'll be the final circuit. And like yesterday, I'll do an outro where I kind of recap the workout. So I think I'm gonna do the outro after the sauna. So before I head to the sauna, I'm going to do an ab exercise. So uh, this is a fairly common exercise where someone has an elevated thing in front of them and they bring one leg over it and then the other. It's good for abs and uh, hip flexors. So I'm just adding a little bit of a twist to it by holding a kettlebell in a shoulder rack position which, which allows uh, or which forces one side of the core to stay activated which will give a little bit of a different stimulus when performing the legs over elevated surface. So it looks like this. So yeah, gonna do this for a bit uh, and that'll be my abs. When I go to the sauna, I'm going to do some tips and abs, uh, stay there for 20 minutes, then the outro. So I think this is gonna be the new structure for a while where I do, or at least when I'm in the gym, I'll do an outro or a recap of the workout when I'm in the yoga room, post sauna. So I ended up doing 20 minutes in the sauna. Uh, took a small break and then went back in, no cold shower. Took a 15 pound kettlebell and had it around my feet and did tip raises while sitting down. Um, for sets of 40 each leg, 30 to 40. And I did about five sets of those. But not back to back, just kind of whenever I felt like it. Sometimes it gets like really suffocating in the sauna. So uh, when that happens, I just kind of take it easy. Um, but as far as the workout goes, um, now let me think what all I did. Oh yeah, started off with uh, oh with those cable machine. What did I do first in the cable? Oh yeah, those tricep pushdowns to the rows to, um, whatchamacallit, those curl lunges. Yeah, so uh, I guess pretty much the main thing that I wanted to do was yesterday I did a bunch of arms, uh, but didn't really hit shoulders because my shoulder was hurting. Today my shoulder feels better, so I thought I could incorporate a little bit more chest in. Uh, so I did chest and also did back. Um, what I've noticed is my shoulder hurts with overhead motions. It definitely feels much better than it did uh, yesterday. So I definitely think the sauna and refraining from overhead movements has been helping. Uh, yeah, so pretty much still working out uh, while recovering. Uh, without taking days off. Um, what was after that? Oh yeah, the rotational, uh, rotational row and uh, press. So pressing with the cable while rowing with the kettlebell. Uh, good overall body movement. And also one of the things that I noticed while doing this combination pull pushes is that the abs stay really activated. Like I feel like a lot of work going on in the core area when I do those kinds of exercises, uh, not just in the chest and the uh, back. 
And along with that, I did that combo deadlift move, which was my first time ever doing it, but like it was something that I kind of thought about uh, while I was at the gym. I was like, all right, how can I make a deadlift interesting without having to, or a kettlebell deadlift interesting without necessarily going too heavy with it? I went with uh, 24 kilos, which is around 50, 51 pounds or something like that. Um, so that was an interesting move. The unilateral nature of it, again, recruits the core a lot. A lot of my moves, the way I think about them is how can I target a main muscle group but also get the core involved a little by adding some sort of unilateral or a unilateral load or body motion uh, that forces it to stay active. Um, then after that, did that uh, belted squat. So with the belted squats, one of the things is uh, you have to keep your legs wide. So because of that, it really targets like the inner legs, the adductors, and also gives quite a nice contraction in the glute area. Uh, the fact that it is not uh, above, like it's a kind of squat where the load is not above the hips, but below uh makes your body work differently than if it were above then the farmer carries and stuff just pretty much the idea is to keep the intensity relatively high i don't necessarily have a split uh where i'm doing like push pull whatever or chest back whatever i used to do that but over time my philosophy about how the like how and what your body is meant for has changed and what fitness is has changed. Fitness to a certain degree to me means the ability to do anything, anywhere, anytime. And uh, if we were to, I guess, brainstorm about the true purpose of our body, uh, you know, you, like, let's say a bear started chasing you, you wouldn't tell you the bear, oh, I did legs today, I'm not gonna run today or you know like and so you should kind of be able to be ready to do anything every day also from my understanding at least scientifically it's been shown that uh, the body releases more growth hormone during full body workouts than these isolation workouts so that doesn't mean there is no place for one or the other like I do a lot of this steel mace flowy stuff, hybrid pro flow, etc. But then I also try to move pretty heavy weight. I think the, there is kind of this problem or thing in fitness where once you start working out one way, if you work out any other way, you're considered somewhat of an outcast to those people. So like, let's say you're uh, started doing bodybuilding style training, but then you get into steel mace, then the bodybuilders start calling, uh, like, start calling you names or saying, oh, what is he doing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Or if you start training like a power lifter, then uh, once you get away from it, people start uh, calling you names. If you start training like a crossfitter, then everybody's calling you names. I think there is pros and cons to each of these ways of training and uh, which is why you need to combine or do a little bit of all of it uh, because the to get the pros of all of them and so that the cons of one can be even out by the other. Um, yeah, so I definitely think there is a place for every kind of fitness depending on what your goal is. If your goal is to be specialized at any one of those things, then yeah, specialize in that. Like, uh, you know, if your goal is to power lift, definitely you have to do more squats, bench, and deadlift. But to somehow say that that is the holy grail of anything, and if you're doing any exercise that is outside of those three or outside of boosting your numbers on those three, uh, I don't think is the right approach. I think you have to uh, train, or, well, you don't have to, but I think 
uh, like people who are actually super fit or well not actually like that's the wrong word um, uh, like people who are athletic and stuff tend to have multiple day for different capabilities uh, like I guess the best example would be like American football players they not only can throw heavy weight around in the weight room but they can do all these athletic maneuvers they do medicine ball throws they do like a lot of kettlebell stuff too and yeah there's many different ways to achieve fitness so to speak uh it is up to the certain an individual as to what they want to specialize in or not and yeah i don't think anyone should necessarily frown upon anybody else for doing what they want to do uh at the end of the day people are just trying to get fitter than they are and yeah it doesn't need to be this uh tribal thing anyway just some thoughts uh let's do a quick ab check not bad all right that's it for today's video little rant i think i'm going to do these recaps at the end of workouts now just to i guess express thoughts a little bit more to be a little bit to add a little bit more personality or thoughts to the workouts rather than it just being so circuit one circuit two and that's you know that's all but yeah uh that's all for today's video see you all tomorrow